What are living fossils and how do living fossils support creation? This week on Creation Magazine Live, how living fossils support creation and refute evolution. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. I'm Richard Fangrad. And I'm Calvin Smith. And this week on our uh, show, we're talking about living fossils. Living fossils. So, yes. uh, what's a living fossil? Well, this is something that's usually announced this way when something we knew only from the fossil record, uh, which is presumed been extinct for millions and millions of years, according to evolutionists, are found to be living somewhere unexpectedly. And so, hence the term living fossil. This is something we've only known from the past and now it's here and it's alive. So it's alive, a living fossil. Right, yeah. Examples of living fossils would include the coelacanth fish, uh, for example, the wallamai pine tree, horseshoe crabs. Those are examples of living fossils that you might have, uh, might have heard of. Right. And there's dozens of other plants and animals that fall into this category of living fossils. Exactly. We can learn a number of things uh, from living fossils. Since God's word in Genesis is true history, uh, then any evidence that you take and you properly interpret within that history is going to be consistent with observational science. Uh, whereas if the evidence is interpreted on a, a basis of false history, of course, uh, evolution millions of years, uh, one that the Bible doesn't support, um, like dinosaurs living millions of years ago, for example, something right. like that, yeah. um, it's, it's going to show conflict uh, ultimately and uh, with, with observational science and thus show that there's a, a problem with that interpretation. That's yeah. what we do on the show all the time. Right, yeah. So let's, let's, uh, let's look at an example of, of uh, see how this, uh, this works here. Um, the coelacanth fish that you can see here is, uh, is an ugly fish, I think. Uh, <laughs> it was believed to have evolved around 340 million years ago and become extinct around 70 million years ago, about the same extinction date claimed for the dinosaurs. So, they never lived at the same time as people. This is according to evolution. Right. Coelacanth fish uh, died out long before humans ever evolved. That's, that's right. the story. However, in 1938, live coelacanths were discovered off the coast of Madagascar. And a few decades later, researchers found that Indonesian fishermen had been selling these things in their fish markets for decades. <laughs> so, that's right. Coelacanth fish. There we go. So, here's the point. Uh, no fossils of coelacanths have ever been found in the same layers as human fossils. Right. right? We know that. Uh, but they have been found in the same layers as dinosaur fossils, yet we know coelacanths and humans do live together because they do so in the present world. They live together right now. Right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So what's the conclusion? The conclusion is very simple. Just because we don't find fossils of certain animals or, or, or plants, uh, fossilized together in the, in, the, in the fossil record, they're not yep. fossilized together, does not mean that they didn't live together. Right. So, uh, I mean, if you just start with the Bible, and therefore the presupposition that man and dinosaurs did live together, that's what you'd, you'd plainly get, land animals and man created on day six of creation. Right, Dinosaurs yes. were land animals, yep. etc. Um, you know, you can properly in interpret the, the, these types of facts that we find, right? Um, or in this case, really the absence of a fact. <laughs> right? Uh, and thus an argument from silence. Um, yeah. But the coelacanth example shows that the uh, absence of human fossils in dinosaur rock doesn't support the idea that dinosaurs lived uh, millions of years before man, and that's commonly, commonly taught. Uh, yeah. For some more details um, on this, you can go to um, creation.com slash missing or misinterpreted and, uh, and get some more information. Right, yeah. So we can start a bit of a list about what living fossils teach us. So the, the first point is, what, what do living fossils tell us? Number one, just because we don't find animals fossilized together does not mean that they never lived together. And for an example of that, the coelacanth and humans. Coelacanths and humans do live together today. Right. And so we can make, that's one thing that living fossils can teach us. Right. I mean, uh, if this is the first time someone ever tuned into Creation Magazine Live, they might be thinking, whoa, who are these guys and what are they talking about? Yeah, living yeah. fossils, what does this have to do with the Christian faith? And, and, and you know, salvation I, I love God and, the and, 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 <laughs> and, and I love Jesus and, and, and he died for my sin. What, what does this got to do with anything? But, you know, I grew up as an atheist. All atheists believe in evolution. You got to explain how you got here without God. Guess what the only game in town is? Evolution. Evolution over millions of years. Yes. Yeah. And, and so 
oftentimes people think, think there's, well, there's this amazing amount of scientific evidence against what the Bible says and in support of evolution. And so right. even you, you got people that are, are kind of on the fence of whether they believe in God or not and they start believing in evolution because they believe in all this supposed scientific evidence. And so this is just maybe one small part of the creation evolution debate, living fossils. Yeah, yeah. But I remember being taught uh, about living fossils somehow supported evolution. When I, I mean, we're going to go through some stuff here and we're going to see <laughs> that that's, that's completely wrong. But again, these, these are things that people are seeing, uh, children in school are seeing. Uh, as use of evidence for evolution. So as we go through this here, you're going to see that, no, no, the biblical uh, history is supported right. from what we see in the rocks. We'll worry about exactly. That. In nature documentaries and science textbooks, one often hears about creatures that arrived at their body plan very early in evolutionary history and have not made any real changes since that time, supposedly millions of years ago. These are called living fossils, like the coelacanth and the Walmy pine. This phenomenon is known as stasis, things staying pretty much the same. And it turns out that pretty much every animal in the entire fossil record appears suddenly and shows this same history of stasis. This was not predicted by evolution. A more recent and radical theory called punctuated equilibrium recognizes stasis in the fossil record but requires belief in rapid massive leaps in evolution, an unsubstantiated just so story. However, the physical evidence, sudden appearance and stasis in the fossil record fits remarkably well with the biblical account of a recent creation followed by a devastating global flood, just as the Bible describes in Genesis. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Welcome back. If you just tuned in, we're talking this week about living fossils. So what can living fossils teach us? Well, we have a three-point list here. And so the first point we just discussed, we can add a second point to that. Number two, many animals show very little evolution over millions of years. For example, salamanders are living fossils. Thousands of the earliest known salamander fossils have been found. Re researchers said that, quote, there are whole bodies, impressions of soft tissue have been preserved, and stomach contents. Right. It's pretty incredible. In, in our magazine, uh, we reported in on the article in Nature, which said that these salamander fossils from Inner Mongolia were uh, assigned an age of 161 million years. And the new crypto brand kid shows extraordinary morphological similarity to its living relatives, which underscores the stasis within salamander anatomical evolution. All right. Okay, so stasis. <laughs> Analyze what that means. <laughs> Well, st let's explain it. Stasis, if you haven't heard that word before, here's a dictionary definition of what stasis means. A period or state of inactivity or equilibrium. No change. No change. Evolution means change. Stasis means no change. So in, in 160 million years, these fossils, 160 million years old, there should have been some evolution in those 160 million years. And that's why researchers have, have uh, concluded that these cryptobranchid salamanders alive today can be regarded as living fossils, Right, is what they say. But this is actually strong evidence for the biblical account of creation. It is, right? yeah. Living things were created to reproduce after their own kind. So, i.e., salamanders have always been salamanders, which explains why living and fossil forms are virtually identical and... Uh, this is more support from, from Genesis, what, what the Bible says about Genesis, Absolutely. and what from we yep. see in science. And you can go to creation.com slash sala, as in salamander, to, uh, to read the full article. There, a thing staying the same is the opposite of evolution. <laughs> evolution, again, means change. And there are many things that have stayed the same. Here's a list of some of these things. Ginkgo trees, for 125 million years, no evolution. Crocodiles, 140 million years. The Tuatara lizard, 200 million years, no evolution. Horseshoe crabs, again, 200 million. The lingula sh lamp shell, 450 million years, no evolution. And finally, Neophilina mollusks, 500 million, half a billion years, and the modern examples look identical to these apparently 500 million year old Which is fossils. Which in is incredible because evolution says that the environment is going to change and that's going to trigger course. evolution. So yep. you can't say that the environment didn't change for 500 million years, but yep. what are some of the evolutionary responses? Luck, chance, their habitat hasn't changed. You know, in the case of the coelacanth, the cockroach that has survived for 250 million years demonstrates the key to success is to be abundant and live everywhere. Well, isn't that what everything wants to do? <laughs> uh, long generation times, you know, at least 15 years for a tuatara lizard. Um, 
But, but this can't apply to rapidly reproducing but unchanging cockroaches, uh, archaeobacteria, right. um, yeah. which, which multiply in minutes, yet uh, evolutionists are believed to have been on Earth for 3.5 billion years. So these don't really hold water. Yeah, the article Zoologist says this, some biologists marvel that there is any evolution at all, considering the possible pitfalls of change. <laughs> <Tip>. uh, <laughs> she quotes the Yale paleontologist Elizabeth Verba saying that, quote, organisms are so complex that it is hard to change one aspect without wrecking everything else. Well, they're recognizing <laughs> that point anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. They really don't have a good answer. No, basically. they don't. The, the, the new scientist article leaves uh, the problem unresolved. All this leaves a rather complicated picture. Be general or specialized. Live fast or slow. Keep it simple or don't. Be in the right place at the right time. If all else fails, try becoming a super species blessed with a physiology that can withstand anything. <laughs> what kind of answer is this? It's in a, a non-answer. In, in a I mean, scientific magazine. Uh, clearly living fossils present a major problem for evolution and evolutionists are struggling to make sense of these discoveries. Yeah, that, that sounds like grasping at straws, right? It's just, it's, it could be this yeah, or it could, could be, be this, it could, could yeah. be anything. Yeah. Now to Christians, however, there's, there's really no mystery here uh, the, about these so-called living fossils. We have the eyewitness account, uh, creation, from God's word obviously, yep. of how these creatures were created to be fruitful and multiply after their kind, and the fact that so many modern creatures have, quote, stayed the same as their fossilized ancestors is no surprise to us at all. That's what we would expect in the fossil record. Uh, and, and we also don't agree with the millions of years either. Of course. But uh, yeah, this, this type of thing is what we would expect as Christians. The data fits Christianity wonderfully. Creation.com is the world's most powerful internet resource for finding answers to questions about the origins debate. It includes an online store where you can browse through hundreds of the world's leading creationist books, DVDs and related materials. Scientists and researchers from around the world have contributed more than 8,000 articles, many of which have appeared in leading creationist publications over more than 30 years. Creation or evolution? When the results are in, which one is supported by scientific observations? Find out at creation.com. So, what do living fossils tell us? Well, we got two points so far. Just because we don't find animals fossilized together doesn't mean that they never lived together, i.e. the, the, the coelacanth and humans, etc. Uh, point number two, many animals show very little evolution over millions of years. Well, um, this stasis baffles evolutionists, yes. right? It doesn't fit yeah. with what they'd expect to find. Yeah, let's talk a bit more about uh, li what living fossils can tell us about how to understand dinosaurs. Everybody wants to talk right. about dinosaurs, dinosaurs when you talk about fossils. Yeah. Now we mentioned that briefly a, a few minutes ago. Dr. Carl Werner, he graduated from University of Missouri with a distinction in biology. Uh, he received his doctoral degree in medicine at age 23 and he practices family medicine in St. Louis today. Now he wrote the book Living Fossils. This is, uh, this is the textbook on living fossils, a yes. tremendous book by Dr. Werner and we'll, we'll summarize some of the, we'll highlight some of the main points in the next few minutes here. But uh, if you want to get a, if, if you're interested in any of this, pick up a copy of Living Fossils at creation.com. Uh, he wrote the book Living Fossils and, uh, and he said this, I became interested in living fossils as a tool to test evolution. Living fossils provided me a simple way to test evolution. If evolution did not occur, animals did not change significantly over time, and if all of the animals and plants were created at one time and lived together, humans, dinosaurs, oak trees, roses, cats, wolves, etc., then one should be able to find fossils of at least some modern animals and modern plants alongside dinosaurs in the rock layers. I set out to test this idea without any foreknowledge of any modern organisms in the rock layers. My results show that many modern animals and plants are found with dinosaurs far more than I ever expected to find. Wow. All right. Well, yeah, looking over the book is, is a spectacular. Dr. Werner and his wife, Debbie, uh, traveled over 100,000 miles, 160,000 kilometers. A lot of traveling, yeah. Took 60,000 photographs as they filmed the television series Evolution, the Grand Experiment. And uh, episode two of this series, Living Fossils, uh, reveals exactly what they found, by the way, if you want to look into that. Um, they focused on fossils found in dinosaur rock layers, right? right? Supposedly millions of years old, and compared these fossils to modern animals and plants. We looked only at fossils found in the dinosaur dig sites so that scientists who support evolution could not suggest that the fossils we looked at were not old by their 
dating methods. All the fossils we used for comparisons were found in dinosaur rock layers, Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. Now, here's a list of what they found. Fossil examples from every major invertebrate animal phylum living today, including anthropods, and you can see in brackets there the, uh, the, the animals they found, uh, shellfish, echinoderms, uh, that starfish, crinoids, brittle stars, etc., corals, sponges, and segmented worms. That would include earthworms and marine worms. Cartilin cartilin cartilinous <laughs> that word there. Cartilinous cartilinous <laughs> fish, sharks and rays, bony fish, sturgeon, paddlefish, salmon, herring, flounder, and bowfin would be included in that group. And jawless fish, like the hagfish and the lamprey, have been found in the dinosaur layers, and they look like modern forms. Modern-looking frogs and salamanders have been found at dinosaur dig sites as well. And all of uh, today's reptile groups have been found in the dinosaur layers as well. Uh, and they look the same or, or very similar to, to, to modern forms. Snakes like boa constrictors, lizards, ground lizards, gliding lizards, turtles, uh, different types, soft shells, hard shells, crocodilians, alligators, crocodiles. Um, Dr. Werner said, popular, uh, contrary to popular belief, modern types of birds have been found as well, including parrots, owls, penguins, ducks, loons, albatross, cormorants, sandpipers, etc. Most people don't <laughs> expect to find a dinosaur and a penguin in the same uh, era, right? But they're there. But they're there. Yeah. <clears throat> now, Dr. Werner said, when the scientists who support evolution disclosed this information during our TV interviews with them, it appears they could hardly believe what they were saying on camera. I bet. That he's getting this information from these guys, and it's amazing. Yeah. Fossilized mammals have been found. It looked like squirrels, possums, Tasmanian devils, hedgehogs, shrews, beavers, primates, and the duck-billed platypus. <laughs> he said, I don't know how close these mammals are to the modern forms because I was not able to see most of these, even after going to so many museums. The list of mammals con uh, continues. Paleontologists have found 432 mammal species in the dinosaur layers. That's almost as many as the number of dinosaur species. Right. In, in, so incredible. What, is the, what does the age of dinosaurs mean, then, if there's almost as many mammals as dinosaurs in the same age, right? Right, yeah. Um, uh, he said he made an interesting observation. We visited 60 museums, but did not see a single complete mammal skeleton from the dinosaur layers displayed at any of the museums. This is amazing. Also, we saw only a few dozen incomplete skeletons, single bones, of the 432 mammal species found so far. Why don't the museums display these mammal fossils and also the bird fossils? Um, we need to ask the question, was there an, an age of dinosaurs? And we'll get into more of this when we get back. Unless you've been living underground for the last few years, I'm sure you've heard of feathered dinosaurs. It seems we're constantly hearing that birds evolved from dinosaurs. Some have even suggested that KFC could change its name to KFD, Kentucky Fried Dinosaur. But not all evolutionary scientists accept the dino-to-bird dogma. A prominent one is renowned ornithologist Alan Fiducia of the University of North Carolina. He recently stated, the theory that birds are the equivalent of living dinosaurs and that dinosaurs were feathered is so full of holes that the creationists have jumped all over it. He further laments, with the advent of feathered dinosaurs, we are truly witnessing the beginnings of the meltdown of the field of paleontology. Those looking for evidence that birds evolved from dinosaurs will be disappointed, because the creator has told us that he created birds before the land creatures, such as dinosaurs. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Welcome back. We're talking about living fossils today, and, and we're not finished with the list of things that have been living animals that have been found in plants that have been found with dinosaurs. Right. If you're interested in some more of this information, especially on Dr. Werner, go to creation.com slash Werner Living Fossils uh, to see the interview there with, with Dr. Werner. Plants, modern looking plants have been found with dinosaurs as well. That's right. Yeah. Dr. Werner reports, in the dinosaur rock layers, we find fossils from every major plant division living today, including flowering plants, ginkgos, cone trees, moss, vascular mosses, cycads, and ferns. Again, if you look at these fossils and compare them to modern forms, you will quickly conclude that the plants have not changed. Fossil sequoias, magnolias, dogwoods, poplars, and redwoods, lily pads, cycads, ferns, horsetails, etc. have been found at the dinosaur digs. <laughs> It may be simpler just to ask, since so much has been found with the dinosaurs, is there anything that hasn't been found, been found yet. with the dinosaur layers yet? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and in answer to that question, Dr. Werner responded this way. He said, 
I did not find fossils of every organism living today in the dinosaur layers. Rather, I found representative examples of all the major animal phyla living today and all of the major plant divisions living today. Taking it one step further, within these bigger groups, I frequently found representatives of all the major groups or classes within a phylum. For example, the echinoderm, starfish, sea urchins, etc., I found fossils of all the major types living today. Same with the insects and crocodilians, etc. I did not find any large mammals. The largest mammal discovered in a dinosaur layer so far, the live size, like with flesh on, would have been around 30 pounds, right. 13 and kilograms, something like that. And he concludes this way. Nevertheless, with so many living fossils, both plants and animals, from all of the major phyla and all of the major plant divisions, it points to stasis, lack of change, not evolution. Right, yeah. So what do, you, what do you think would be an example of, of the, the most dramatic and most exciting living fossil? Uh, how right? about a living dinosaur? <laughs> a living dinosaur. I mean, wouldn't it, if we had a li live dinosaur today. Yeah. Um, now, we don't have a living dinosaur. Right. Okay, let's clear that up. But we almost do. And, and uh, creationists watching the program will be familiar with this. Back in 1993, Dr. Mary Schweitzer, yeah. uh, the paleontologist, made a remarkable discovery. She found... Uh, blood cell, blood cells in a T-Rex bone. Yes. She said it was exactly like looking at a slice of modern bone. Here we go again, living fossils, modern bone. Of course, I couldn't believe it. I said to the lab technician, the bones are, after all, uh, 65 million years old. How could blood cells survive that long? And she's since gone on to, talk, to, uh, to find more blood cells, blood vessels, different types of protein, uh, and even DNA. Has Science been found Magazine even announced that they found dinosaur DNA. Dino yeah. DNA, dino yeah, DNA just, just amazing. Yeah. Okay, so let's recap here. What do these living fossils tell us? Well, one, yes. just because we don't find animals fossilized together doesn't mean that they never lived together, i.e., coelacanths and humans or humans and dinosaurs, etc. Many animals show very little evolution over millions of years. This stasis baffles evolutionists, it doesn't fit with what they would expect to find. Environments would change. They would expect that to drive evolution. Sci and number three, scientists find both extinct animals, like dinosaurs, found with modern animals. This is expected based on biblical history. Everything got buried in a great flood. You'd expect to find all those things buried together. Yeah, and since we've been talking about dinosaurs, we've got a, a special deal here. This, this book, Untold Secrets of Planet Earth, Planet Earth Dire Dragons, is a fantastic book. Uh, what the author of the book has done, he has, um, uh, he's traveled around the world, looking at and, and taking pictures of sculptures and paintings and carvings and so on of, of things that any 10-year-old would tell you, that's a dinosaur. Right. And these pieces of art have been done, obviously, after the flood. It's evidence that dinosaurs lived after the flood. F fantastic evidence that dinosaurs lived after the flood. Yeah. Get this book and you can get this DVD for free. Yeah. Free DVD. This is Behemoths Buried Alive by Mike Ord, he's a meteorologist, done a lot of work on the Ice Age and a lot of work in the flood and geology and so on. You can get this DVD for free, fantastic DVD. It talks about dinosaurs being buried in the flood. You can get it for free. Go to creation.com and on the checkout, when you check out in your store, use this code, CML, Creation Magazine Live, Dragons. You can get dino, you can Dire Dragons and Behemoths Buried Alive for free uh, using that code. Creation Ministries International focuses on the Bible's first book, Genesis, and the creation evolution issue. Many of our speakers are scientists with PhDs who, before joining CMI, were employed in various scientific fields. Creation Ministries speakers go to churches, equipping and encouraging people with the message of the truth and authority of the Bible and its relevance to the real world. To locate upcoming CMI events or inquire about booking a speaker into your church, visit creation.com. All right, as we wrap things up here on today's show, we're going to look at the feedback. We often get feedback to our website, people emailing in, they have questions. Some of them are, are quirky, some of them are, are honest questions, like this one today. How did creation change after the fall? Right. This is from Dacid K, and he asks this. Please could you explain scientifically how rapid post-flood restructuring of creation occurred to incorporate things like immune systems, changed biological structures to transfer 
to carnivorous diets, viruses and bacteria, and a host of parasitic biological structures introduced at the macro and micro level. If you want to follow along, actually, go to creation.com slash postfallchanges, and you can uh, access the links there and so on as we uh, go through this. Right. Dominic Statham from our UK office uh, replied to this question. And he said, our understanding is that immune, systems, uh, that immune systems existed prior to the fall and that these became adapted to deal with some of the virulent germs which arose after sin entered the world. Indeed, our immune systems have clearly been designed to be able to adapt. Some bacteria and viruses are very beneficial and appear to have been created by God in the beginning. For example, bacteria are essential for decomposing organic matter, enabling old plant material to be recycled. They also help to digest our food. Viruses can increase plants' tolerance to heat and drought destroy cancer cells and keep, uh, help keep soil fertile. Just as bees carry pollen from flower to flower, viruses can transfer genes between bacteria, enabling them to perform their many useful functions. Harmful versions of these bacteria and viruses are probably degenerate, mutated forms of originally benevolent designs. Uh, there are examples of yeah. animals um, known today uh, for being carnivorous, but are quite capable of living without meat, uh, for example. Um, we've got an example of a lion that wouldn't eat meat and a, 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 and a, and a bird of prey that, that, that's, that's not. You can check those articles out on our website. And uh, in some cases, uh, animals may not be able to survive today without meat, but this would be to do genera degeneration from their original perfect state. Right, yeah. So here's, here's a question that this, uh, this fellow wrote in, yep. and it's just an honest question. A lot of people have this question. Yeah. Uh, what kind of changes took place there? How do we explain things that are bad today? in a very good world before the curse entered and so on. It's just an honest question. These yep. are the kinds of questions that Christians have today and uh, it's, just, it's just an honor to be able to uh, provide them with answers exactly. uh, you know, from using 35 years of creationist research behind us. Uh, Dominic finishes his response uh, with these words, as you point out though, some animals have changed markedly due to the fall. Some have become highly adapted to hunting and meat eating and others have sophisticated defense and attack structures. This cannot be explained entirely scientifically as it arose, at least in part, supernaturally due to God's judgment on sin. You can read about that in Genesis 3. Chapter 6 of the Creation Answers book, that's our most popular book. Chapter 6 of the Creation Answers book has some helpful comments on all of this. You can read it online for free. And if you go to this article that we're, that we're reading here, that we're discussing, there's a link that'll take you to Chapter 6 of the Creation Answers book, How Did Defense and Attack Structures Come About? There's, there's several different answers. We actually did a show on that. Uh, was that last season? We talked about that a little I bit? So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I've heard, you know, skeptics sometimes say, well, look, you know, look at all these diseases. They must have been there. Do you think Noah and his family had all these diseases, you know, when they went on board and off the ark? But they don't understand that the world has been uh, getting worse and worse and worse in time. These things degenerate, and that's where a lot of these, uh, these bad things come from. Right. Get a free copy of Creation Magazine. This is Creation Magazine Live, and what we're trying to do is do a live version of the kind of information that you get in Creation Magazine. If your faith is being built up by this, you can get a free copy. Just go to creation.com slash free mag and get a free sample digital issue of Creation Magazine on which this show is based. We'll see you next week.